Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're starting now with three capacitors instead of two capacitors, which makes the problem a little bit more complicated. Let's try to start as simple as possible. All three capacitors are the same size. They're all three two microfarads, and only one of them is charged. The other two are originally not charged. We're connecting them in a series connection. So here you can see it. that's our first capacitor, our second one, and our third one. Of course, they're not going to stay like this because charge is going to leak out from this capacitor onto this capacitor. Let's say one of the positive charges, because they repel each other, is going to move over here, which means it's going to push a positive charge away. This becomes negative. That positive charge will move over here, which will push away a positive charge. This becomes negative. And this positive charge will move around the circuit all the way around and negate one of these negative charges. And this will continue until everything is at equilibrium. The question is, what will be the final charge on each of the three capacitors when equilibrium is reached? How do we do that? Well, remember on the last videos, with just two capacitors, we ended up adding the voltages around the circuit. We're going to do that here. Remember the definition of capacitance is that it's equal to the ratio of the charge divided by the voltage, which means that the voltage is equal to the ratio of the charge divided by the capacitance, which means that here, when we add up all the voltages, we can make this relationship work. This is V1, and that would be the positive end and the negative end. This is V2, that's the positive end on this side, the negative end, and V3, positive end this side, negative end there. It's a good idea to write that down so you realize, wow, this is negative positive, positive negative, positive negative. When we go around the whole circuit, add up all the voltages, we get minus, oh, not minus V1, because if we're moving around this way, we go from the negative to the positive. That's plus V1, and I don't really want to write that. V1 minus V2 minus V3 is equal to zero. All right, well, we can say that V1 is equal to V2 plus V3. Ah, maybe that's a simplified way of writing it. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the substitution. V1 is going to equal the final charge on C1, which is small q1, divided by C1 equals q2 divided by C2 plus q3 divided by C3. And, in this case, since all the capacitors are the same size, since C1 equals C2 equals C3, we can simply get rid of the C1s because we're dividing every Q by the same number. We can then write that Q1 equals Q2 plus Q3. So there's our first equation. Of course, we have three unknowns. It means we need two more equations, two more relationships. Well, one relationship can be seen over here. For every charge that goes from C1 to C2, the same amount of charge goes to C3 as well, which means that, because they're connected in series, that the same amount of charge will exist on C2 as on C3. So therefore, we can write that Q2 will equal Q3. And we can also say that Q1 or C1 will end up with the amount of charge equal to the original charge minus the charge that went to C2. In other words, Q1 will equal the original charge, which is big Q1, minus the charge that went to C2, which is Q2. Therefore, we can write that Q1 is equal to Q1 is 40 minus Q2. Now we have three equations I believe is sufficient for us to solve for the three variables Q1, Q2, and Q3. First of all, we're going to take this Q2, or this equation, and write that Q2 is equal to 40 minus Q1. And we're going to replace Q2 by that. And then since Q3 is equal to Q2, we can also replace Q3 by that. And therefore, this equation now becomes the following. Q1 is equal to Q2, which is 40 minus Q1, plus Q3 
which is 40 minus Q1. I can make these two Q1s move to the other side. That will give me 3 Q1 is equal to 40 plus 40, which is 80, or Q1 is equal to 80 divided by 3, which is equal to 26.67 microcoulombs. Since Q1 is equal to that, we can then find Q2. Q2 is equal to 40 minus Q1, which is equal to 40 minus 26.67, or Q2 is equal to 13.33 microcoulombs. And since Q3 is equal to Q2, I can say that Q3 is also equal to 13.33 microcoulombs. And in the end, notice that if I were to add up all these charges together, they do not add up to the 40 micro... Whoa, this is a mistake here. This should be microcoulombs, not microfarads. Good thing I caught that. But as you can see that if you add these three together, they do not add up to the 40 microcoulombs we started with. And you might say, whoa, did I make a mistake? The answer is no, you did not make a mistake because we have a positive connected to a positive here and a negative to a positive. So there's going to be a difference in the way in which the charges are distributed. And to make sure you do it correctly, you definitely want to go ahead and follow this procedure. Now, how do we check? How do we know for sure that this is correct? Because we know that it should not add up to the 40 microcoulombs. Well, you can actually go back to this original equation right here and see if you plug in the numbers, will that indeed be correct. So that's what we call our check. Let's do a check. So when we check, we go Q1, which is right here, 26.67 divided by C1, which is 2. Is that equal question mark to Q2, which is 13.33 divided by 2 plus 13.33 divided by 2 for Q3. And then when you look at that, you add this and this together, you get a 26.67, and you can see that, yes, indeed, that does give me the correct answer. And that's how we check.